uh, why go out of the church when there are so 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 many lovely sisters here who can sing? Yeah. Why go out of the church? I invite you to, to, to come with me to the book of Revelation. What book did I say? Revelation. I invite you to turn with me to the book of Revelation. Now, I don't know, I've been a rural pastor for, for some time. I've been in Venda. And uh, in Venda, there, there are no pulpits in some, in some places. So if I move away from the pulpit, I hope you won't be offended by that. Is that fine? Yeah. I'm not one who is confined to the pulpit. <laughs> Revelation chapter 21. If you are there, you can say Amen. Amen. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Verse 4. And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Verse 5. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. Now let's go to the next chapter, chapter 22. And the verse is verse number 14. It says, Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers. And sexual, immoral, <coughs> and murderers, and idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, your word has been read. We ask that they dissect it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John writes the book of Revelation, and he writes this book on the island of Patmos. John writes as one who is a prisoner on the island of Patmos. He writes as one who is in captive, held captive by his, by his oppressors. John writes as a prisoner, but he is not a prisoner of Patmos. He is a prisoner of the gospel. John, as he writes at this time, they had failed to persecute John. History tells us that John had been placed into a burning pot of oil to uh, murder him, but that had failed. God had intentions for his servant, John. John, after they failed to kill him, they then decide to remove his eyes. And he writes as a blind man on the island of Patmos. Now if you go to chapter 1, John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I saw... John is blind and he says, I saw the Son of Man seated on his throne. Many of us have eyes to see, but we do not really see clearly. John had no eyes, but he saw. May God help us. May God give us spiritual eyes to see. You see, John was in incarceration. He was in a maximum prison. You see, if you want to destroy a person, put them in isolation. Yeah. That's what happened during apartheid. The freedom fighters were put in isolation. They were sent to Robben Island, placed in single cells where they had no form of contact with any other human being. If you want to destroy a human being, put him in isolation. John is in isolation. John is separated. But John, 
is, he has this immense freedom with him. I'm reminded of Paul and Silas who were in prison, but they were not imprisoned. John, Paul and Silas were free in prison. This is John writing from the island of Patmos. And he says here, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The same John who had no eyes saw a new heaven and a new earth. And he says, the first heaven had passed away. And also there was no more sea. Now, for the past few years, I've, I've actually spent my Decembers at the beach, you know, observing the wonderful nature of, of God. And I cannot think of a world that does not have an, an ocean in it. But John says, in the new earth, there was no more sea. What is John talking about here? Now, if you want, you can take this literally. If you want, you can take it however you want. But this is what it means. What John is saying here, remember, John is on an island, the island of Patmos. John is separated physically from his loved ones. And the sea is something that brings sorrow to him because it separates him from his loved ones. Are we together? Yeah. Now John says in the new heaven, yeah. in the new earth, yeah. I saw there was no more sea. Yeah. It does not mean a, a literal sea. But what John is saying, he's saying I saw that in the new earth there was no more separation. Yeah. Yeah. Beloved, where we are going, there's no separation. Where we are going, we will dwell with our loved ones. And then he writes, and he says, I John saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, adorned as a bride, prepared for a groom. Now, the new Jerusalem, if I had time, I would, I would speak about the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem is a city that has 12 gates. It is a city that is made up of 12 foundations. It is a city that is made up of different uh, 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 stones, precious stones. It is a city that has pure gold. Now we also, in this documentary of the gold mafias, <laughs> we also saw that. But where we are going, beloved, we will walk on gold. John says he saw a city, a city whose height, a city whose breadth, a city whose length were all proportionally equal. That is the city that John saw. And he says, I saw, or rather I heard a voice say to me, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. God shall dwell with them and God shall be with them. Now, you don't understand what John, what John is saying here. When you read verse 22 of the same chapter, John says, I saw that there is no temple in there because the temple is the God Almighty and the Lamb of God. You're not with me, stay with me. John says, there is no temple in heaven because the temple is God himself. In other words, there is no church where we are going because church is God himself. Wow. Preaching will be a thing of the past because where we are going, we are not going to be preaching to sinners who need to repent. Where we are going, preaching will cease. Where we are going, prayer will cease. In fact, there's a song right who says, Face to face with Christ my Savior, I shall see him by and by. The reason why we pray, it is because we don't have a form of contact or physical contact with God. Now, this presents to us a, a divine problem because we see a God who constantly seeks to dwell with man. You go to the book of Genesis, God, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse, uh, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, we see God communing with Adam and Eve. The Bible says God would visit Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. He would, he would converse with them. He would have communion with them. As if there was enough. When sin had entered, Exodus chapter 25, verse 8 says, let them make me a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. 
We seem to serve a God who, who, who enjoys our company as human beings. As if there was enough. The very same writer John, in the book of John chapter 1 verse 14, he says, And the Word became flesh, and the Word dwelt among us, and the Word tabernacled with us. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. God loves dwelling with men. And the Bible says, John, behold, the tablet of God is with men. Prayer will be a thing of the past. One songwriter says, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. Farewell, farewell, yes. sweet hour of prayer. When we get there, we will need no prayer. When we get there. Now John continues and he says, And God shall wipe. God shall wipe all tears from their eyes. And there will be no more sorrow. There will be no more pain. There will be no more death. For these things have passed away. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Am I speaking to somebody today? Mm -hmm. God, when, when, when John speaks about God wiping away tears, I, I have this with my sanctified Im imagination, I, have, I, I, I see a God who, who, who's holding a white handkerchief and he's wiping each and every one of our tears, one by one, he's wiping our tears. But if God were to literally wipe all away our tears, uh, he would spend years and years to do that. What John means here, he's not saying that God will physically wipe away our tears. But what John is saying is, God will remove the cause of our tears. God will, 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 will permanently remove what causes us to cry. So now we experience pain. Pain is a necessary ingredient, by the way. It's in, it's in, you know, midwives, when, 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 they, when they assist in, in giving birth, when a child or a baby does not cry, they smack the child so that it can cry. Mm -hmm. Not crying is not normal. You're not with me. <laughs> yeah. Crying is a necessity. God did not intend for us to cry, but He uses us, he uses tears, so that we may understand who He is. God will deal with the cause of pain. You know, right now we are under a, a process called sanctification. We are all under construction. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are a construction site. You are a construction site. For no one is perfect. The Bible says, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So no one here has not sinned. Are we together? So all of us here are, are, are under construction. But a day is coming when we shall be sanctified. And after we're sanctified, we will be glorified. And after we're glorified, Satan and his friends will be terrified. And after Satan is terrified, sin will be emancipated from sin. And after we are emancipated, we will, sin will be obliterated. After sin is obliterated, it will be permanently eradicated. That is our God. God will deal permanently with the cause of what brings pain to us. Now then he continues, verse 5, and he says, Behold, I make all things new. Yeah. Behold, I make all things new. Now in the Greek language, there are two words for new. There's neos and kainos. Right. Neos refers to time. Are we together? Neos refers to time. Now for example, if my friend buys a car, a second hand car for that matter, we all say, hi, oh, he's got a new car. 
But it's not really a new car because he's the second owner of the car. Are we together? It refers to time. Now, most of us, I know we are up on New Year and we're celebrating New Year's Eve, you know, as if we don't know that a new day begins when the sun sets and we, we wait until midnight to say New Year, it's okay. Yeah. Now, we say Happy New Year. That's time. Are we together? But nothing really has changed. You are the same person that you were before New Year happened. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Now, if Brother Mkini, I'm going to use him as an example. If Mkini has a, a new girlfriend, <laughs> it's a new girlfriend referring to what? To, him. to time. Are we together? It's not to say that the girlfriend is new. <laughs> the girlfriend is not new. It's, the girlfriend is new because of time. Are we together? But Kairos, when, when God says, Behold, I make all things new, Kairos refers to freshness. Kairos refers to things that have never been used before. When God makes a new heaven and a new earth, He will create things which are new, things that have never been touched by anyone before. And now, what I love about this is that when, when, when God created in Genesis, are we together? When God created in Genesis, man was not there. But when God creates a new, in Revelation, we will be there. And we will witness when God creates. Yeah. You're, not, you're not with me. The honor that we're going to have when we see creation taking place. Yeah. Yeah. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Then John continues. Chapter 22 now. He says, Blessed are those who do what? Can you please open that verse, please? Chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are those who do. Yeah. It does not say blessed are those who read. Yeah. Blessed are those who know. Yeah. It says blessed are those yeah. who do. Yeah. Yeah. Other translations will say Blessed are those who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb because they have the right to eat of the tree of life. You're not with me. You're not with me. Blessed are those who do the commandments of God. Now, the commandments of God are a transcript of God's character. The commandments of God are who God is mm -hmm. in essence. In other words, blessed are those who have God or who have Jesus in them, who have the character of God, who not only reflect the character of God, but they do the works of God so that they might have a right to the tree of life. And then Paul says, for we are citizens of the house of God. <laughs> now, citizens have rights. Even foreigners have rights. You know, I was at the, the embassy the other day, and uh, as I was doing my visa application, get inside there, You know, you, you feel like you're in a new country, but why in South Africa? Now, they have new rules, they have different rules. In fact, when you go inside there, you don't go in with your phone, you don't go in with your... Nothing goes in there. You go in as you are with your documents. You get there and after you receive the visa, they give you your rights. They, they, they tell you this is what you're entitled to when you come to our country. Now. This, where we are going, there are rights. 
But rights also come with what? The responsibilities. Are we together? Yeah. Now, as a foreigner, you are entitled to specific rights. We all know that some, some of us here, we, we know. We know by experience. <laughs> we know. I, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that you don't have certain privileges as a foreigner. You know, you can't go to certain places. You can't, you can't apply for certain things as a foreigner. Are we together? Yeah. Now, John says, citizens, where? In heaven. But now, we don't start being citizens when we get there. We are citizens here on earth. Beloved, heaven is not, is, is not some place where, where and, and by the way, those who think that we are going to be playing harps and sitting on clouds in heaven, you are wrong. That is not heaven. That is a heaven for lazy people. That is not heaven. Are we together? We start living heaven here. When the Bible says, six days you shall work and labor, yeah. and on the Sabbath day you shall rest, it means what it means. It means that in heaven you will be working. <laughs> Remember, we said that the commandments are a transcript of God's character. So if they do not change, they are immutable, they are infallible. These are the commandments of God. So in other words, what we do here is what we're going to do in heaven. Nothing is going to change. <laughs> we are citizens of a, of a certain place. Where we're so now, in heaven, there will be no foreigners in heaven. Are we together? There will be no foreigners. But allow me to say that the, the only way you are a foreigner is if you have not made it into heaven at all. Are we together? Because John says, I saw that those who did not make it, those who were not in the city, were outside of the city. I want to pitch a tent. I want to pitch a tent. But before I pitch a tent, if you go to Revelation chapter 21, the same chapter, and that's verse 8. Please be in verse 8. I want them to see this verse here. John mentions something very critical here. He says, outside of the city are cowards. Yeah. You're not with me. Yeah. Outside of the city are cowards. You know, we're breeding a society of cowards. A society that is overly sensitive. A society that, that is weak. Young people, when, when your girl dumps you, you go and take a rope and you hang yourself. You are weak. You are a coward. I'm not apologetic about this. You are a coward. Those who commit suicide are cowards. Heaven is not for cowards. This thing called depression that, that, that they've sold to us, mental health and whatnot. You know what? You have the power to dictate how you want to feel. Yeah. You have the power to, to go where you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let this thing called depression, uh, 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 we are breeding a society of weak people. And, and what the Bible says is, heaven is not for cowards. Paul writing to the young Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love. God has not given us a if you If you check that word in Greek, a spirit of fear, that is delius, which means cowardice. God has not given us a spirit of cowardice. Heaven is not for cowards. Probably some of us would not be sitting here if our if our fathers were covered. Yeah, you didn't get that. <laughs> we would not be sitting here if our fathers were covered. They were brave enough. Yeah. But unfortunately, there are those who begin brave and then they end up being covered. <laughs> deserting their children. Just passing. But now, I'm pitching a tent now. John says, outside, 
a dog. Yeah. He begins by saying, outside, they are cowards. Outside, a dog. He does not say that outside are liars. He says, outside, a dog. In other words, he's, he's, he's putting into an umbrella everyone who, who is outside of the city. Now, when he then classifies that there are sexual immorals, there are liars, there are drunkards, and so forth, that's a, a, classifi a classification of different dogs which are outside of the city. <laughs> outside are dogs. Yeah. I, I wish I had time to preach a sermon. Which kind of dog are you? <laughs> Just choose. What kind of dog are you? <laughs> we have so many dogs. <laughs> It's not me, it's the Bible. By the way, we have dogs even in the church. Yeah. And some of them are looking at me. <laughs> we have dogs, young dogs, puppies, and old ones yeah. that you cannot teach new tricks. Yeah. We have them yeah. here and they are watching me. Yeah. We have dogs. You see, dogs, by the way, Elder Terra, she saw the dog. There was a dog that was following me. I walked when I came here. It followed me the whole way. Dogs. I love them. By the way, I love I love dogs. Yeah. I love them. In Vanda, where I was working, there was a dog called Sensei. This dog was very protective. Uh, it was overprotective, but at the same time, loyal and you see this dog. It would even bite its own owners at times. It would snap. I've seen it snapping at its own owners. You give it food, it wants to bite the hand that is giving it food. You know, there are some people who are like dogs. Dogs are fascinated by little things. Anything that moves, a dog chases anything that moves. There are some of us here yeah. who are dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Chasing creatures. Yeah. Every creature that wears a skirt, you are chasing after it. Dogs. Don't be a dog. Man. Don't be a dog, man. I, I know ladies are happy because you are not excused as well. There are female dogs as well. They are also female dogs. <laughs> Married men, please drink from your own words. Yes. Don't be a dog. You are chasing everything that moves. And and, and you see that the, the thing is about the, the, these kind of dogs, they they, they don't segregate. They chase everything. <laughs> they're small, they're tall, they're, they're big, they're, they're short, all sizes, they don't care. John is warning us that outside of the city are dogs. And he says they are sorcerers. You know, there are some of us who are practicing witchcraft here. Sit here. Yeah. Some of us are practicing witchcraft. The want of money. You go, you acquire a snake there. It gives you money every day. John is saying, those that consult, even some are consulting prophets here. Consulting prophets. Something goes wrong in your life, you go and seek a prophet. You go and seek a sangoma. What John is saying here, those that consult these mediums, together with these mediums, Outside of the city, they are warmongers, they are murderers, they are idolaters, they are those who commit sexual adultery, they are those who, 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 who are liars, who love lies and make these lies. John is saying, You belong. I am definitely going to that city, that city for square, a city where there's no light. But the Lamb of God is the light. Amen. A city where we shall dwell with our God forevermore. That's where I am going. I don't know about you, 
one old Negro spiritual says, I don't care what I am in the city. I don't care what I do in the city. As long as I am in that city. I don't care if I have to mop the streets of hope. I don't care if my crown has no stars on it. But what I do care about is that I'm in the city. John says, I saw a great multitude. And he also speaks about the 144,000 who then came into the city. I don't care whether I'm part of that 144,000. I don't care. All that matters to me is that I make it into the city. Amen. How I make it, I don't know how I'll make it. As long as I'm there. Amen. I want to make an appeal Amen. to somebody who says, Lord, I want to be there. Lord, I want to be there. All of us are not immune to this thing called sin. Mm. If you're not careful, you will find yourself outside of the city. If you're not careful, you will see some of us enjoying inside. By the way, I have this, 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 this imagery that, you know, this city will be invisible. Mm. You will be able to see what is happening inside. <laughs> when we are eating of the tree of life, by the way, the tree of life has, has, has fruits. It bears a new fruit every, every month of the year. And we will eat of that tree and we will have life. And the Bible says, the leaves of that tree are for the healing of the nations. When we get there, we will be healed, beloved. This thing called tribalism, this thing called ethnos, ethnocentricity, will no longer exist in that new city. Mm. I don't know what heaven you are going to, but I'm going to heaven. And that heaven is not a heaven for Shonas. That heaven is not a heaven for Zulus or Debenes. It's a heaven for all black and white, pink and black. It's a heaven for all. The gates are open, beloved. The gates are opened. I want to make a call. I'm done. Amen. Amen. I want to make a call. Those who are saying, Lord, the city is through Jesus Christ. Amen. Without Jesus, forget it. Anyone who wants to receive Jesus, my friends, young people, anyone to receive Jesus, if you're there, just raise your hand where you are. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Won't you stand on your feet and we'll have a moment of prayer? Just rise on your feet and we'll have a moment of prayer. I want to invite those who are saying, Lord, we want to receive you for the first time.